Well, welcome back. We we, we continue our uh, our our voyage through word problems, if you will, and we get to this this little subsection of distance equals rate times time problem. Uh, in every class, every class that you have in beginning algebra, most intermediate algebra classes, you're going to have some distance equals rate times time problems. So. I'm going to give you one example. I know that's not a lot, but that's not the nature of these videos. My, my, my idea here is to teach you very well through one example that you can run with that. I can't do all of the distance equals rate times times problems, but I can give you like the most common one. And, and so I'm going to give you that one that's very similar. I'm going to show you some other setups that we'll talk about, uh, but this is going to illustrate the concept as best as I can. So. In distance equals rate times time, uh, the first thing we have to understand is the formula. So imagine you're driving down the road and your speedometer says 60 miles an hour. For you, probably 60 miles an hour. Let's get a really slow car, then 60 miles an hour. But uh, 60 miles an hour and you go for three hours. You don't have any traffic. You're real blessed and you just keep on driving. 60 miles an hour for three hours. How far are you going to go? Well, 60 miles per hour means in every hour you have gone 60 miles. So 60 and then another 60, and then another 60, or three times 60, that's 180 miles. That's what distance equals rate times time does for you. The distance is gonna equal the rate that you're traveling for the time that you traveled in. Uh, it kinda takes for granted that you're going to steady speed. So if we're not going to steady speed, that's outside of the realm of this distance equals rate times time problem. So we have a distance equaling how fast you're going for how long you're going it. Um, we can use that. So let's say that we have our example here and you decide to go for a run. So you're jogging along and you jog five miles an hour for a little while and then you step it up and you jog eight miles an hour. In total, you make the loop back to wherever you started from and you've gone seven miles. It took you 1.1 hours. So we know a lot already. We know how long we ran. We know how long we ran it for. What we don't know is how long we ran each jog for, each segment. So I'm going to give you a tool, a graphic organizer to help you with this because at first glance, we read through these problems, I don't know, who's supposed to know how many how you guess and check, I guess? Well, that's really slow. It, it works sometimes, but it's really slow. And so I'd like you, and if you have a teacher like me, you're going to make sure you work anyway, you might as well know how to do the math. So let's write down everything that we know in a table that organizes our, our information for us. So most of the time, what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we'll put the scenarios on the left-hand side. What's going on here and then something that relates to them up here. We had two jogs. We had, let's say, jog one, jog two, and then we had a total. Up at the top, we know that we had, and this would be part of the formula aspect of word problems. So we've read it. We'll probably read it again very carefully in a minute. We have a sort of a picture, a graphic organizer, and a formula going on. This is going to create the verbal model for us. After that, we'll fill in the variables, we'll get our equation, we'll solve it. But this is the hardest part. Anytime you're moving through space and time, you have distance equals rate times time if your rate's continuous. So we're, we, we have that here. So our distance equals rate times time. Put your scenarios here. How much? How many different rates you ran, how many different jogs you did, whatever it was. Jog one, jog two, and how much you totally did. Distance equals rate times time. There's three things that are related to any distance problem. The rate, the time, and the total distance. Write down everything you know. So that we're going to read the problem carefully right now. We're going to write down everything that we know. So we're running. Okay, we've got it. First jog, we jog at five miles an hour. That's a rate. So right here in our, our little matrix, we have jog one, five miles an hour. And then we run at eight miles an hour. Let's call that jog two. In total, all right, we got a total. We ran seven miles, and we ran for a total of 1.1 hours. How long do we, okay, so that's the question. So now we're going to go through and make sure we don't miss anything. We have two jogs, we got two jogs. We had a distance, a rate, and a time. Okay, let's fill that out. Jog one was five miles an hour. Jog two was eight miles an hour. We had a total of seven miles, and we had a total of 1.1 hours. It also helps if you put that this is your rate, your total miles, and your hours, just so you know what you're dealing with. 
Now, the rough part is figuring out what goes here and here. You see, if we can figure out what goes here, this is the big part here, if we can figure out what goes here and here, then these columns really work together. And I'll talk about a little bit after we're done with this example, how you can change this around to, to illustrate more examples, okay? But if you find a rate and a time, you automatically know a distance. If you find a distance and a rate, you automatically know a time. If you find a distance and a time, you automatically know a rate. So given any two variables, you know the third one in this. So for instance, uh, let's say that this was, it's not going to be five hours, six hours, but I'm going to make it up right now. Let's say that they ran five, or you ran, five miles an hour for six hours. That's 30 miles. If you know this, you can just multiply, that's the key here, multiply these two columns to get that one, so to get that box. Distance does equal rate times time. That's great, but we still don't know this. So let's think carefully. Do you know how long this person ran for job one? Do you know how long the person ran for job two? You're gonna to have to pick one of these to be a variable. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that you understand we are in linear equations, and as we discussed in the approach to problem solving, you can only use one variable. So call whatever one you want a variable, it doesn't matter. But in the other box, you have to relate it. Now here's the key, okay? Don't miss this, get this. Do you understand that the amount of the time the person ran here plus the amount of the time the person ran here has to equal 1.1 hours, you get that? If you ran a total of 1.1 hours, and you ran a portion of it at this speed and a portion of this speed, well, the times that you ran, they got to add up. You can't run for two hours plus five hours and get 1.1 hours. It doesn't make sense. Uh, these two have to add up to 1.1. The time you ran here plus the time you ran here has to equal the time you ran there. If you guys get that, this is not hard. Think through this before you go any further. Make sure you understand that these times have to add to total time. Time you ran for one, time you ran for two, has to add to the time you ran in total. Because if you get that, check this out, it's pretty cool. Call either one of these a variable. You know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use T to stand for time. I don't know what that time is. It doesn't matter which one you choose. What does matter is this. If you, because we're gonna find this out right now. If you really get that these two add, have to add up, Call this a, a blank space like Taylor Swift does. Call it whatever you want. I don't care what you call it. But understand this. This is pretty neat. Understand that T plus blank space, if you want, equals 1.1. If you get that, that's awesome. You understand the idea. Your times have to add up. T plus, I don't know, has to add up to 1.1. Solve for that. If you solve for that, what do you mean solve for it? What do you mean solve for it? Hey, that's an equation. Get this by itself. Remove this one completely, not divide, subtract. It's connected by addition, subtract. If you subtract that T, then we automatically, not like terms, we automatically find out what should be in our blank space, what should be in that box. Now let's think logically through it. If I told you that you ran for 1.1 hours, and I said, hey, that's, uh, that's 0.1 hours. To find the missing spot, you'd have to subtract it from 1.1. That's the idea here. It's saying, if you ran for a total, you're gonna have some, you'd have to take this, this something away from the total to figure out what's left. That's the idea. You have a total. You're taking up some of it here. Take it away from the total to figure out what's missing. That's what the math does for you. What's even more, well, equally interesting is that if you add these up, it does equal 1.1. Try it if you want to. It's almost a trivial statement because it has to work. It's how you created it. T plus 1.1 minus T. T minus T is gone. 1.1 1 .1 equals 1.1. 1 .1. It does work. That's pretty cool. This is a hard concept for a lot of people. So if you're not quite getting it, look through it again. Listen to it at least one more time and then try it for yourself. See if you can do this whole blank space idea to get the, the missing box. Um, this, is, this is what makes a lot of these problems possible is taking a total, 
using a variable you create and relating the missing piece back to that variable because we can only use one variable. So we start with a total. We go, okay, well, this is something I don't know. Uh, this is something I don't know, but I know that these two have to add up. If these two have to add here, then this one minus this one has to have, it has to be that one, it has to be the missing piece. That's what that math said to us. It's, you're almost done. It doesn't look like it, but you're almost done. You see, we have a rate and we have a time. If rate times time equals distance, then we go this way and we can fill out this distance. One more thing before we do, okay? I just want you to get this also. Do, do you understand that whatever you ran here, how far you ran here plus how far you ran here is going to equal your total. If you ran three miles here and two, four miles here, you'd have to add up to seven miles. That These things have to add up here. So if this is two, this has to be five. This is one, this has to be six. These have to add to seven. The amount that you ran in one plus the amount that you ran in two has to equal the total. So whatever we get, we can add this up. That's kind of cool. So this matrix is starting to hopefully make sense. We fill out all of our information. So your little 10-second recap. Fill out what you know. Use what's given to you to create some sort of a relationship with one variable. After that, use another column by multiplication or whatever, whatever you're given. 5 times t is 5t. 8 times this whole amount is 8 times 1.1 minus t. Now we know that our distances have to add up. So I'm going to move over here, but this column basically says, if that doesn't look like a distance to you, look at the formula. Rate times time is a distance. Five, five miles an hour for five hours is going to be 25 miles. That is a distance. So is that one. These two distances have to add to your total. So we have our first distance. Our second distance and they have to add to the total. What's easier? That. It's a linear equation. It's got a decimal in it, but who cares? It's got some distribution. It's got some like terms. It's pretty easy to solve because you know what you're doing already. This is the hard part. The hardest part is figuring out how to start, honestly. Um, and what it does is it it takes what you're what you're asked for, how long did you run, and it, that's, that becomes your variable. Relate the missing box, or whatever you want to call this, missing blank space, to that variable, then use another column to add up. It's usually a multiplication or a division concept of distance equals rate times time. So now let's solve it. Uh, maybe stop this and solve it on your own. So we would distribute. We check for some like terms, and we have some. Our variable is right there. Our steps for linear equations say get rid of the constant that's attached to your variable first. And your last step in linear equations is always divide. Please don't leave it. Don't do that. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to your teacher. Explain the problem. The whole reason why we do word problems is to answer real life stuff. So stuff that actually happens. So answer it. This question was, how long did you run at each rate? Well, look back at your table. It's why we did the graphic organizer. Look back at what the T represents. The T represents how long we ran at five miles an hour, our first job. Now, what if you had Reverse that. Put your t here and your 1.1 minus t here. That's okay. The t which you, you would have got would be different and it would represent the time for your second job. It doesn't matter where you put it. It matters that you follow the process that I'm giving you. So our first job was 0.6 hours. All right, so we have the first job at 0.6. How would you find out the second job? It's, it's given to you. Take 1.1 minus 0.6. So our first job, the way we write this out, you write a full sentence, say, we jog five miles an hour for 0.6 hours and eight miles an hour for 0.5 hours. How are we getting the 0.5? 
1.1 minus 0.6 is 0 0.5. So we jogged 5 miles an hour for 0.6 hours and 8 miles an hour for 0.5 hours. Look how it adds up. 0.6 plus 0.5 equals 1.1. We used our distances to figure that out. Now, I told you a little while ago that I was going to talk about um, when you can use this differently. So let's say that we, we're not asked for a time. We're asked for a distance or we're asked for a rate. So check this out. You'd still fill out your, your table, whatever, however, whatever information you're giving to, you're still filling that out. But we don't always have to go rate times time equals distance. There's two other kind of permutations of this that we can, we can deal with. If you solve this for R or T, we get two more formulas we can work with. If you solve for R, basically divide both sides by T, we can get that a rate equals a distance divided by a time. Maybe that makes sense. If you went 100 miles an hour, or sorry, if you went for 180 miles and it took you three hours, you could figure out you went 60 miles an hour. That's what that's talking about. If you solve for time, if you went 180 miles, and you were going 60 miles per hour, you could figure out that it would take you three hours to do that. These are ways that we can use this table to our advantage. You can switch this stuff around, it doesn't matter, maybe put time equals distance divided by rate, that's all right. But these are different ways that we can utilize this table. The big idea here, the, the hardest thing for students to grasp is this idea. The picking a variable and using your total to get the other box. That's the hardest part. If you get that, then you should be feeling pretty good about yourself. Um, sometimes you, you get a little easier one. Sometimes they'll tell you, let's say you ran for two hours, and then, uh, or two, let's say, how about this one? You ran for, I don't know, but you know that your other run was two hours longer. So if you don't know what your, how long you ran for five miles, but they say, hey, in your second run, you ran for two hours longer or two hours more than. That's kind of easier, uh, and then you can, you can use that in some of your calculations as well. So the hardest part is taking the total and working backwards from it. If you're given a time and they, or a distance or a rate, and they say, one of them you don't know, but the other one is two hours longer, or five hours less, or it relates it back to that. Use your variable and add or subtract to or from it. Uh, that's, that's really common as well. So next time we're going to do some mixture problems. And mixture problems are really similar to this. So we're going to see the same idea, and I'll give you two examples on, on how to do those. So hopefully this makes sense for your distance equals rate times time. Try the table. It helps a lot. Work through this problem, the original problem I gave you again before you do anything else. Work through that problem, make sure you get the T and the subtracting that from the total to get the missing piece. They have to add up. You can subtract to find the missing one.